Hi folks, this is Ben with Meshtastic covering our second week in our month of modules video series. And this week I'm pretty excited to present the telemetry module and this is one I've had a lot of involvement in. Um, and I think it's one of the more fun features about Meshtastic because it allows you to do some kind of weather station type uh, functionality over the mesh, which is really neat. But one of the things that's also interesting about the telemetry module is that it's actually three modules in one. So we actually have three types of metrics that we can send um, over the telemetry module. Uh, and those go to the device. You can view them, um, some of them on the screen. Um, obviously view all of them in the serial logs and then they all propagate over the mesh but those would be the device metrics so that's that's our every every mesh tastic device pretty much is reporting device metrics over the mesh um, so that's your your battery level and voltage uh, that's that's measured by the device um, and the channel utilization and airtime utilization for the LoRa network. So um, that, that's useful for determining whether things are too congested to transmit or not, um, and things of that nature. Um, another type of uh, telemetry that we can report on is environment metrics. And that's the one that folks mostly get excited about, I think. So I've got a, I've got a screen here on this uh, rack meshtastic starter kit with a, um, a pretty nice little sensor that I'll go into later um, that is displaying the environment um, metrics in the telemetry module. So the main things that we actually care about with that one are um, the temperature, humidity, uh, barometric pressure, and uh, current, voltage and current actually, are also in there if you want to measure um, like solar power input, something of that nature, um, and gas resistance. So the, that's that's kind of a unusual one, but that has to do with air quality, and we'll go, we'll go into air quality a little bit here as well. So that's that's our latest one. So we actually have a very very new part of telemetry module, um, which is air quality metrics and. I know that that one's kind of <laughs> interestingly relevant right now with what's going on in Canada and the, the northeast of the, the United States with uh, air quality due to the wildfires. And uh, one one thing I want to say about the air quality, and we'll we'll go into this a little bit more uh, later, but I am not um, pushing out AQI numbers. So you know if. If you're familiar with air quality index, um, that's not what's coming out of these devices. It's it's the raw um, particulate size concentration and counts. Um, so without going too far into the weeds on that, you essentially need about 24 hours of data to average to produce an AQI. So uh, just just trying to manage expectations for what you're getting out of this. So if, if, you, if you go the air quality route, you're kind of on the hook for um, doing a lot of that calculation work yourself. So, um, but let's get into it. So let's talk about, um, sensor types. Um, cause I think we're, we probably will spend the bulk of our time talking about the environment module and some of the sensors you can use there. So, um, one of the main ones that folks like to use, and I think I've got, yeah, I've got one right here is uh, BME and BMP 280s. These are really cheap. There's a lot of counterfeits on the market, so you gotta be careful. Um, but those are made by Bosch. And the neat thing about these is they're kind of a weather station all on a single chip. So you have uh, temperature and barometric pressure. And on the BME 680, you have um, humidity as well. Um, so re really neat chip. And uh, one thing I wanted to say um, that I forgot to mention earlier, so all the sensors that we're using with this um, outside of the, of the device metrics, um, everything on environment 
and air quality has to be an I squared C sensor. So um, if you don't know what I squared C is, it's actually what this screen is connected to. So it's it's at minimum three pins, but usually there's a fourth because you actually want to power it. But we have the vol the input uh, three voltage, three point three voltage. Um, ground and SCL SDA pins. That's what our, our screen plugs into. And the neat thing about telemetry in MeshTastic 2.0 is we actually auto detect a lot of the supported sensors. So in this case, um, you know, you saw all the, the uh, different types of readings I had coming out of the environment metrics um, for this chip. Uh, th this particular one is kind of one of Bosch's flagship uh, sensors. It's called the Bosch BME 680. And so that one has temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, and air resistance. I really recommend this one. You'll pay a little bit more for for that chip, but um, it's very powerful it's, and it's, it's also accurate. Um, so I would recommend that you look into that one. And I would also recommend if you do go... Um, down the sort of building out a MeshTastic weather station route or just want to explore telemetry in general, buy into the the rack whiz block system because so many of these sensors just plug in. There's no like soldering or, you know, crazy breadboarding. Um, it's a great way to get your feet wet uh, with telemetry. Um, so we've also got, so not everything has a million data points. We've got um, this MCP 9808, it's supposed to be a really accurate um, temperature sensor. And of course this one is from, I think this one's from Antifruit, yeah. So um, you would potentially plug that into your your screen port for your T-beam or, um, or your rack if you've got a header soldered on there. Uh, but really any anywhere where we have a default I squared C bus. Um, you can you can do that. Um, the other sensor type that I kind of alluded to earlier is the um, the current and voltage sensor. So that's really useful for um, say I've got a solar setup that's in, on my uh, remote off grid property or whatever. Um, and I want to monitor that, but I don't have, you know, Wi-Fi or anything like that. Well, you can run one of these um, INA-based sensors. So this one's an INA-260, I think. Um, and you run your solar panel or whatever's powering across these, um, these terminals here, and it will capture um, voltage and current. So uh, really neat, really neat little chip. Um, We've got two of those supported, so we've got the INA260 and the INA219. Um, there's also, and I think I've got one here uh, from Rack, this is LPS22, and uh, that one's kind of more of a niche, so we've got just barometric pressure coming out that, and again, the Rack whisk block system, really nice, just snap this onto one of the 20-pin ports right here and it's it's auto detected um, so that's that's really nice uh, there's also some stuff from the SHT uh, series for mostly mostly those are temperature and humidity level I've got one right here I don't know if it's yeah I don't think this one's supported but kind of a similar similar one um, and then finally we have the the PMS 003, um, and that is actually our air quality sensor that we support. And so again, I squared C based um, uh, sensor, um, and this one is actually a native rack whiz block one. So uh, that's what this guy is right here. This this little ribbon cable plugs into here, and uh, I don't kind of barely showing up here, but there's a little fan in there to pull. Uh, particles from the air and try to take a reading for from that so um, really neat uh, this one's very new so if you run into any bugs let us know um, there's actually I actually got a bug fix in it just this week um, for auto detecting this because this one's very power hungry so you have to um, 
do some things to initialize it. And I've noticed sometimes it's flaky and you'll have to reset your device to pick it up. But uh, really neat. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about just briefly while we're talking um, sensors and how to connect them. So um, there's a really neat standard that is out there called um, the Quick Connector. And uh, Rack actually has a whiz block little um, piece right here that you can use to connect those guys. I'm not going to actually try to put that on there. Um, but uh, this is a connector that is specifically for I squared C sensors. So it's got it's got a standard for um, voltage, ground, and SCL, S, SDA. So you can plug in multiple of these sensors. The thing I like about it, though, is you can also daisy chain them. So if I get this AQI sensor here hooked up, I can also run another quick connector to this guy and have temperature and humidity and air quality so that's something to look into um and you could you could just as easily as well if you if you had just a t-beam you could snip that off with your with your flush cutters and solder that to a header um, so a lot of options there um, i just i really like the quick connect system i think it's it's super neat um, now let's talk a little bit about how to enable um, telemetry. So um, first we have to, if we, if we want the actual um, environment telemetry, uh, to enable that we have to set that to enabled. And um, we already have a default for the update interval and the update interval is essentially how frequently that's sent over the mesh. You'll find this to be almost universally true that the default um, for a lot of these modules is 900 seconds, um, which is which is 15 minutes. So that's pretty common. Um, we also have the ability to control our device metrics. So if you want to send battery level once every hour instead, you can set that. Uh, the screen earlier, which you saw, um, that is uh, also something you can turn on or off. Um, and again, because we're <laughs> Meshtastic is a is an international project, you know, uh, here in the U.S., obviously most people prefer Fahrenheit. So you, you can set your screen to display Fahrenheit instead of Celsius, if you so choose. Um, and again, the third the third uh, part of the telemetry module air quality also has to be enabled if you want to actually uh, enable that particular piece in the uh, in the firmware and we also control that interval so again 15 minutes by default but you know uh, if you want to change that you're you're welcome to and um, just going through here uh, so here's some of the CLI commands and I'll, I'll post I'll post some commands um, in the in the video um, description as well about how to how to kind of um, well I'll actually post the ones that I use to configure this guy um, and so uh, that's pretty much it um, you know there's a lot of a lot of opportunity here to grow this plugin it's it's very it's very kind of oriented in in a way that is built to capture most of the, the main use cases for like the weather station um, in the environment telemetry but uh, there's totally room to grow and so um, if you want to add sensors if you want to add functionality um, we don't have to stop at three three pieces of the of the telemetry module we can have more telemetry um, so uh, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas there or um, what your use case is for uh, the telemetry module might be. And uh, as always, go to the Discord, join that. Um, it's very, very uh, helpful people there. And um, we can help you troubleshoot any issues you might have connecting sensors for the telemetry module. And I guess that's it. Thanks, guys.